Randy showed you a slide listing the Turing Award winners uh, who are, came from or are still with the School of Computer Science. Uh, notably, Herb Simon and Alan Newell received their Turing Awards in 1975. That's a significant year uh, because it was the same year in which a young Harvard student had his own revolutionary thoughts about technology and its future. That student embarked on what he later called, quote, a little extra project, writing software for the world's first personal computers. The little project, of course, became Microsoft, and the young student was, of course, Bill Gates. We're very delighted and proud that Bill would take his time to be here today. It's actually his second visit to Carnegie Mellon this year. The first one earlier this year was to our campus in Doha, Qatar, and now he's here in Pittsburgh, of course, to help us dedicate these wonderful buildings. Please join me in welcoming back Bill Gates. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. I am excited to be here as part of this dedication uh, for the new Gates Center. It's an honor and it's a privilege uh, to have been involved. Uh, there's a great number of people who've made this possible. Uh, starting with Carnegie Mellon President Jerry Cohen and CMU's Board of Trustees. Uh, their vision and their support, as well as the uh, thoughts of Professor Guy Blaylock, who traveled across the country to gather ideas from successful academic buildings to ensure that both the Gates and Hellman Centers would meet the demanding goals laid out. Uh, clearly, uh, they did a great job, and, and uh, we see it uh, before us today. I'd, I'd like to particularly thank uh, Henry and Elise Hillman for being essentially partners together in uh, getting this area to uh, be so fantastic. A number of other people uh, are, have been key to this, uh, including more than 20 uh, Microsoft employees. And it, it's really no accident that that came together. Uh, the link between Microsoft and Carnegie Mellon has always been very strong and the list of distinguished alumni and professors who've been a key part of Microsoft's success is also long, uh, including Rick Rashid, Anup Gupta, Arnold Blim, and Harry Shum. Many of these people provided significant donations uh, to help with the building, and I know they're thrilled to give back to CMU for the important role it, it played in their careers. If anything, the connection between Microsoft and CMU is stronger than ever. Uh, they're working together on a, a wide range of projects spanning some of the most ambitious and exciting things in all of computer science. There's also a strong foundation, a connection between the Gates Foundation and CMU. Uh, one of those is that uh, there's over a dozen uh, Gates Millennium Scholars here and I had a chance to meet with them and talk about their great work uh, earlier today. Another example is a, a project on learning. Uh, this is the Carnegie Mellon Open Learning Initiative. And I think this is a, a, an amazing and uh, critical piece of work. The idea is to use online interactive material to adapt to the student, to see what the student's confused with. So the student immediately knows what they're understanding and what they're not. So the teacher can see how they're doing explaining the complex concepts and dynamically adapt the in-classroom time to make sure uh, that the right things are covered. Also, the course itself, by being online and measured, can be in a, a state of constant improvement. The idea of these virtual labs and intelligent tutoring systems, I think, can really revolutionize education. And we need to revolutionize education. You know, today more than ever, if we look at uh, the quality of education that most students in this country receive, it's very, very poor. The experience that you've had 
uh, before you came to CMU, and of course uh, here at CMU itself, is unfortunately the exception rather than the rule. And as we think about technology and all the things that's revolutionized, you know, buying airplane tickets and looking at DNA data, I think it's perhaps most amazing how little so far it's changed the practice of education itself. And yet, in terms of empowering people to achieve their potential, not just in the United States, but in the world as a whole, uh, having great teachers, having a great education uh, is one of the most critical things we need going forward. And so I believe that by taking the work being done here, uh, bringing it together with videos of the great professors, uh, bringing it together with lots of data that analyze what's going on in different school systems, making it freely available out on the internet for constant improvement, I believe that education can be radically improved. And so any student who wants to learn something, either in a classroom type environment or in a purely online environment, uh, that, that should be possible. And so it's great to see the ambition uh, taking place in this particular project that the, uh, the foundation is helping to fund. Uh, right now there are 40 community colleges that are partnered with that project actually putting these courses to work and making their contributions to making them better. Pioneering work in, in computer science of course, has been going on here for over a half century, and it was great to see uh, some of the highlights of the, the big, bold contributions that have been made. I think this is going to not only continue, but accelerate. The potential for using computing, particularly in some of these cross-disciplinary areas like computational biology, uh, the promise is uh, greater than ever. Uh, robotics is a, a fantastic example of this whether it's learning or vision, uh, speech recognition, uh, mechanical modeling, all of these things really get pushed to the state of the art. And CMU has been a, a huge leader in this. And it was fun to meet uh, one of CMU's uh, latest robots. Uh, I was told that next time I come, it'll give me a tour around the building. Uh, and it was very polite to me. And uh, they said it would go get coffee for me, but we didn't uh, actually try that out. Uh, <laughs> So there's real progress being made, you know, more and more ambition. In fact, if we think of a lot of uh, societal problems in terms of health care, uh, you know, an elderly population, many of these, if we think a decade and two decades out, uh, the role of, of robots in helping to deal with those problems and in continue to improve the quality of life, I think can be uh, very strong. Uh, there's some amazing people who do this robotics work, uh, including Red Whitaker, Maniela Veloso, Matt Mason, and, and many others. And uh, we really appreciate the connection uh, that exists between Microsoft, who's also working on robotics and very optimistic about these things, and the way that we're working together on the uh, Center for Innovative Robotics. And I think with the right leadership, we can bring everybody in the world together to learn, uh, to try amb ambitious new things. And I think people will be very surprised at the pace of progress in robotics. Uh, you know, even very tough problems like being able to help uh, move a patient in medicine, you know, in 10 or 20 years, I, I think it's very possible uh, that we'll have those things. Language technologies will be another area where you'd pick where uh, Carnegie Mellon has been very much out in front, even going back to the original hidden Markov work uh, that uh, was in 1974. Uh, uh, the, the school has stayed at the forefront of that uh, with a lot of speech activity. In fact, I think if you took any group at, at Microsoft and said what had the highest percentage CMU graduates, it might be our, our speech recognition group. Uh, and of course, the work here continues to push the forefront. Uh, turns out many of these problems are much more challenging uh, than we thought, and that makes them more interesting, more, more fascinating. And there really is uh, pretty incredible progress. I saw today a very clever technique uh, that's been used to help machine translation and engage humans in uh, assisting to show how articles should be translating and then that base of data is there uh, to help with the, the machine approach that over time I think uh, can be very, very good. And we can look into the future and expect that our cell phone uh, will be able to talk to it, you know, ask it questions, tell it to schedule something. You know, that's going to be common sense, and that 
I'd say is uh, on an even near-term horizon, perhaps in five years. Certainly Microsoft, Google, many others are uh, putting that uh, out for various narrow applications today. And there's every reason to expect that'll uh, get even broader.